Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to talk a little bit about a laptop that I purchased last month. So I've been using this for about, well, not quite a month, but almost three weeks. Uh, it, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about it and why I purchased it. So let's get started. First of all, the, the machine that I've been using as a laptop is a Lenovo. Uh, it's an X1 Extreme. I think it is a version 2 of that machine. So it is a, a ninth gen uh, Intel Core i7. It served me well. It works great uh, for a lot of things, but, but it's just getting a little long in the tooth and it doesn't have some of the features and capabilities that I'm looking for. So uh, it was time to replace it. I purchased an MSI. It is a Prestige 16 AI Evo uh, laptop. So it is a 16-inch display. It is OLED. There are other models of this as well. This machine is a, a Intel Ultra 7 processor, and it is the 155H version of that processor. Uh, it also uses a Inbelt Arc Graphics CPU with, well, they say eight cores. Let's just put it that way. We'll just leave it at that. It also has Wi-Fi 7, and I think it's Bluetooth 5.4 is the version of the uh, system. It has a number of things in it that support Windows 11, of course. It has, it is Toby aware, and it does have a TPM 2.0 uh, chip in it as well. So... Those things are all there. So let's talk a little bit about the CPU. It is a 16-core a 22 thread. So that means it has six uh, performance cores and eight efficiency cores and then two low-power uh, efficiency cores. So you have all the way down to 20 watts that you can you can drive the machine at and still have it function. So it has it has a mode that you can put it in that draws very little power. Battery life they say is 12 hours. My experience 8 hours is about it. So that's doing normal my normal tasks, my normal workload. But still in comparison to the Lenovo which had 2 hours is all that thing would last. Battery is a 99 watt hour battery. It has three cells in it. It has some very good specifications. Right now, I'm, I'm having to run it under Windows. It comes with Windows 11 Home, but you can ask for Pro. I already had a, a, a license for Windows 11 Pro. So there are two USB-C ports in the back, uh, and those are USB 4. Uh, and so they also support Thunderbolt 4. There is only one USB-A port, and that is a 3.2 Gen 2. And that's it. That's all you have for expansion as far as USB is concerned. Other, other ports that you have on the box is there's also an HDMI port on the back. Now, this is for the 16 Evo. The 14 Evo is a little bit different on its placement. Uh, because there's a little bit of an overlap on the back, so there aren't any ports back there. They're on the sides. Uh, the HDMI port's on the back. That's a 2.1 uh, HDMI uh, port. So it, 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 the, uh, it's a, the USB 4 supports power delivery. Uh, it also supports uh, DisplayPort 2.1, as well as your normal USB and Thunderbolt operations as well. And both ports uh, are the same. They both do the same thing. The ports on the right-hand side you have, which is kind of weird that you have a Ethernet port. I have yet to determine if it's a 2.5 or a 1 gig uh, Ethernet. Uh, there is also, uh, besides that port, there's also a full-size SD card reader. And there is a theater audio jack on the side as well. On the left side, there are no ports on that machine at all. Most of the most of the machine is surrounded by vents, 
So you get very good cooling on this machine. Uh, I've noticed that even under when I was benchmarking, and that pins the processor for long periods of time, the machine was cool to the touch. It wasn't it wasn't thermal throttling at all. It was just this CPU really handles processor. It handles voltage and uh, cooling very very well, at least in this design anyway. It comes with 32 gig on my machine. It was 32 gig of LPDDR5 memory, and that's at 6400 uh, gig, uh, 6400 megahertz. So, yeah. Uh, storage options range from one terabyte to two terabyte. There are two NVMe. Those are PCIe4. Both of them are. I wasn't sure I had to email support and they came back and said, no, both ports are PCIe 4. There's also a FHD uh, webcam in the front. There's also a privacy switch on the keyboard. You won't find unicorn puke on the keyboard. It's white backlit only. So yeah, <laughs> so if you, if you want that, you'll probably have to go to one of the other laptops from MSI. They are releasing a number of laptops right now. Uh, there is also a studio version of both the 14-inch and the 16-inch. So I probably should tell you this. There are actually three different sizes. There's a 13-inch that you can get. Uh, that uses a, a lower processing power CPU. And then you have the uh, Evo and the studio models. And the, both those are both offered in 14-inch or 16-inch. There's two different uh, displays. One is an IPS display. It's 2560 by 1600. And then there's an OLED display, which is 3840 by 2400. So, and is, that's what I have, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It does HDR as well. You might consider it a bit too colorful, it, but I, I think it's great. Uh, personally, I think it's really good. Weight of the laptop is 3.31 pounds. I can tell you that that does not work at all under Linux. Um, yeah, tip, this is all typical stuff that you run into with new laptops in Linux. Yeah, Wi-Fi doesn't work. The sound chips don't work. The you And also, in this case, the display doesn't work either. So it comes up in default, which is like it's tried everything and it's given up and it's dropped all the way back to 800 by 600. So, yeah, that that's... Uh, yeah, that's that, that's 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 given up to the point where I have no clue what this thing is, and I can't find anything that works with it, and it will not budge from that. Uh, Wayland will find additional modes below that. Uh, X11 will not. It'll just stick it. And it gives up at 800 by 600, and that's it. Uh, hopefully, that will be fixed in 6.7. Hopefully, hopefully they'll fix that. I've noticed there's been a number of patches to mutter and some of those areas, but this really is going to impact the driver in, in the kernel for this as well. Let's talk more about Linux. So I did, I did put up WS, I did, since I had to, since I had to uh, get a uh, professional up, Windows Home, of course, will not support Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL2. You, you have to have the professional or the enterprise version of Windows uh, in order for that to work. So, because you need the hypervisor in order to run it. It runs great under WSL2. I've tested Ubuntu. Uh, I put 22.04 on and then upgraded manually to 23.10. And it's fine. It was fine under 22.04 as well. Uh, everything was working uh, because it's using the drivers that are inside of Windows. So, Windows has, on the MSI, comes with a full set of drivers. So yeah, you, everything is running and everything is working. It's, it's just that when you try to launch, I was trying to boot from uh, Fedora and Fedora doesn't work at all. Uh, well, I, sh I shouldn't say it doesn't work, it does work. But as far as your graphical, it, it, I tried both GNOME and KDE and yeah, same problem, the display is not recognized, so. Yeah, that's a kind of a problem. I'll come back and I'll do an update on this and let you know how, kind of how things are working with it. I have, uh, I'm just going to go through the summary of the benchmark. 
If you want to see the full results, you can go out to my website on openbenchmarking.org and you can take a look at the detail. But so I have the Meteor uh, Lake. This is WSL2. This is running Ubuntu. This is 2204. Uh, and then I'm running uh, the Ubuntu 2310 is that is a version that's running on the uh, the G, the Gen 12 Intel C, uh, mobile CPU. And then just for the heck of it, I included a new machine and it's a Vim 4, uh, which is of course an ARM based machine from Kadas. So to see how the two would compare. Overall, in the harmonic mean, which is the average of all the tests, the uh, Meteor Lake is slightly faster than the Gen 12. So you can see that, yeah, probably we would have an issue with the 13th Gen, that it would be faster in a lot of cases. But I don't know that, as that's conjecture. As far as the IOPS tests are concerned, yeah, uh, Ubuntu does better in that test and, of course, that's usually the case, right? So uh, if the MIBI bytes are, it, it, they will usually, whichever one does well in the IOPS test usually does, it, it flips when you start measuring MIBI bytes per second. And Meteor, uh, like, uh, does better in this instance. Now, this is the, this is the drive that comes inbuilt in the machine. So yeah, this is the uh, the one that come the OEM drive that comes with it. Typically, the performance of those is not stellar. The one that's on the the Gen 12 is the Samsung 990 Pro. Uh, so yeah, it's much it's a pretty fast drive, and it is PCIe 4 there as well. Uh, Geometric mean of all the tests, uh, yeah, Meteor Lake does the best of all. So, and it's a pretty substantial margin. It's, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know if it really, it's saying 20%, which I think is about where Intel was making the claim over 13th gen, but I highly doubt that that's going to be likely since, but it definitely, if you're coming from 12th gen, you're definitely going to notice a difference. Uh, the geometric mean of all the CPU massive tests, uh, Meteor Lake does very well here. Uh, it is, you know, it's almost a full, uh, a full numerical value up 3.8 versus 3.0. Uh, the geometric disk suite, they're, they're going to be fairly comparable, uh, there since both of the, uh, machines use, uh, full, four-lane PCIe 4 uh, buses for this. And then you have the memory test. Of course, this is this is LPDDR5, and this is LPDDR4. So, yeah, that, that's going to be a bit of a difference. The uh, geometric mean of the server tests, yeah, Meteor Lake does great. Uh, for the um, single-threaded single tests, I, it is, it's pretty close, actually, in this one. And then as far as the, yeah, this one, I th kind of thought that one would be further apart, and it's not. And, of course, the VIM, <laughs> the, yeah, uh, <laughs> the Intel CEO is quite correct. Uh, the the low-end ARM chips are not really much of a threat at this point. The threat is coming from Apple's chip. Yeah, that they, they are. Yeah, that definitely is a threat. So, and and of course AMD, I don't have anything modern to test. So, if you want to run my benchmarks and tell me what your results are or post them, uh, so that I can see them, uh, I would love to see what you get in these tests. Now, as far as the first and last place finishes. 61% of the time, Meteor Lake was first over the 12th gen. So anyway, that's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Hope to see you soon. Bye for now.